Hey everybody, it's Nick here with another uh, Power Pages video. Now, what's really cool is we found out this week that we can now upload files as big as 10 gigabytes up through Power Pages websites, which is amazing. Before, we were always limited to very small file sizes, and I know there's a big deal because there are some use cases where you need your external users to upload big files. So now you're gonna be able to upload things up to 10 gigabytes. So I think that's like two two hour movies if you're doing uh, video files or big things like that. So let's check this out. Let's go through the process of how to set this up on your Power Pages website. All right, so I have a Power Pages website provisioned here. Um, again, there's lots of documentation. I think this is in one of the videos as well of how to do this. So I'm not gonna go through that process, but the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our Azure storage. Now, for those of you who are into Azure, you probably do this on a daily basis, but for some of you who've been primarily lurking on Power Pages sites, this might be new to you. So I'm gonna walk you through that process from a very high level to be able to get your Azure storage set up. All right, so I'm into my Azure portal. You're going to be need to have um, an Azure subscription of some sort set up. That could be as a page you go, or you could have some other subscription set up there. Um, this goes above and beyond this particular video. So let's just assume that you have an Azure account. I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna quickly create a brand new resource. And we see there's a whole bunch of different resources here. Like Azure has literally hundreds of different things you can do in it. I'm gonna go down and look at storage. So let's click on this. And then we have a whole bunch of storage options. Now for this particular case for Power Pages, we're gonna to wanna to choose the storage account here. I'm gonna click on that. And here we're gonna to need to go and pick in different things. So resource group, I'm gonna create a new uh, resource group. Um, create a new one. I'm just going to call that RG for resource group and I'm just going to go power pages demo. Just click OK here and it's going to create that. Again, I'm going to give it a name. Um, pick the region. Pick the region where your power pages site is closely located. I'm in Canada. That's where my site is. I'm going to choose Canada, Canada Central. Again, it doesn't really matter, but again, we want to keep that geography because at the end of the day, we are dealing with physics here. All right, for performance, I'm going to stick with standard. Um, just going to kick, go with all the defaults here. Now, you can go through and go through each of these settings and kind of determine wor what works best for you. This is just a demo environment, so I'm just going to stick with the defaults for now. I'm just going to hit review and create. And it's come up with kind of a summary of everything. Again, I'm going to hit create. And now it's actually deploying this. It's creating that storage account for me. So after about a minute or two, that will get created. I'm going to go to the resource. All right, so we have all the details here. What I'm going to go next, I'm going to go into data storage. I'm going to choose containers. And I'm going to create a brand new container. Let's just call this again power. Pages. Oops, all needs to be lowercase. Power Pages storage. And we're just going to again leave the defaults. And it successfully created that storage container. So we have that side of it, but now we also need to create some permissions to allow our Power Pages site to be able to access that particular storage container. All right, so I'm going to go back to the home page here going to go into check out my resources and I'm going to go into my go into this resource group here and what I'm going to need to do is provide access to this particular resource group so I'm going to go to I access control and here I want to go in and um, add a role assignment and I'm going to pick the reader role hit next and I'm going to select members now, here's where I'm going to have to try to find my particular Power Apps portal or my Power Pages site. I'm going to do portal, do a search, and we see here I have, as you can tell, a whole bunch of portals already created. What I'm looking for is the portals dash the name of my particular portal. So I have portals dash demo 2024. That's the portal I created. I want to select this and go and review and assign. And it looks all good. Review and assign again and it's adding that particular role assignment. Now, the next thing I'll do is I wanna go into my actual storage account, basically do the same thing all over again. We're gonna do a bit fine tuning access here. 
we've given access, of course, to the resource group, but now we have to add role assignments to the particular assets themselves, which of course is the storage account. So I'm going to go add a role assignment here. And this time I am going to choose um, storage blob data contributor. So I have to find that. This one, storage blob data contributor. Next, same thing. I'm going to select members and I'm going to find the portal demo. And select this. Review and assign. Review and assign. Cool. So basically now we've added, we basically told <laughs> Azure that we are allowing our Power Pages site to be able to access that storage container. So that's a step that could be easily missed. So make sure you do that before you configure the store, the new storage for your Power Pages site. Now, before we go to our Power Pages site, the other thing we need to capture is the name of the storage account, Power Pages demo, and the name of the actual container as well, Power Pages storage. Uh, I named it the same, they could be named differently, but we just need to make sure we captured those two values. All right, so I'm into the design studio now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a form so we can add a file attachment. Now, I do have here a list of, um, if I go to my sessions page, I actually have set this uh, website up to be sort of like an event management uh, website. So I have a whole bunch of different sessions here. What I want to do is be able to drill down into those sessions if I'm a speaker and maybe upload some files, maybe upload my deck or something like that, or even a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a basically and add a new subpage, and we're going to call this um, session edit. And if you've seen some of my other demos at conferences or whatever you do, you probably recognize this demo data that I've been using. Um, and it seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a form. And again, Copilot's going to want to create this form for me. I'm going to create my own form. Thank you very much. I'm going to store this in the session table. I'm going to choose the website session form, something I've set up earlier. And here I'm going to basically call this upload, uh, upload deck to session. Call that whatever you uh, like. This is more of an edit form. I'm going to put a dash edit here because again, I like to indicate whether we're doing an edit or create form. I'm going to click on data. This instead of creating a new record, I want this to update an existing record. This is something for uploading files. The record already needs to exist. If you have a situation where you're creating a new form, what you're going to need to do is have the user create the data and then maybe have a secondary form where they can edit, where they can do that um, file upload. Um, on submit, um, let's just redirect back to our sessions page, for example, and caption. I'm going to shut that off for now, and then going to attachments. This is where this is where the magic happens. We're going to enable the attachments, and I can say whether an attachment is required or not. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to allow multiple files, um, and then the attachments display label. We can say um, upload presentation here. File types allowed. For now, I'm going to choose all file types, so we can go in very specific which ones we want to allow. If we only want videos, we only want presentations, that kind of thing. And then attachment, whether it's a node attachment in Dataverse, this is the standard regular way we've been doing it. Of course, we're very limited in terms of the size. Here, I'm going to choose Azure Blob Storage. And now it's going to ask me for that um, Azure account storage name. So let's put in those two values that we captured from Azure. All right, so we put in Power Pages storage here and then the upload size limit in kilobytes. So uh, that's 10 million roughly. I can probably do 1024 if I really want to get exact in terms of kilobytes to gigabytes. So it's basically telling me nine gigabytes. That's fine for now. Maximum number of files. We'll stick with five. We can change that if we want. I'm going to click OK here. So now what this has done, this is going to add that section to my form here. The other thing that it will do and quickly show you here, if I look into the data workspace, um, look at my table properties. If your attachments have not been set up, it will enable attachments already to your, to your um, 
table. So just be aware of that as well. So we're good here. And then the other thing I need to do is basically wire up my sessions list to be able to navigate to my new sessions edit page. So I'm just going to go in and edit that list and my actions here. And in terms of my row actions, I have a view detail here and I want to just choose web page. I'm going to choose uh, session edit and yeah, display label. Let's call this edit. Again, we have differences between view and edit. It pretty much does the same thing these days. It's kind of a legacy thing. It just depends. This will add a hyperlink. So I'm going to choose this. And now, of course, we also need to consider table permissions on all of this stuff. So let's quickly go over to the security um, workspace here, look at table permissions. And I have this set up already where I'm allowing authenticated users to edit their own events. So let's just take a quick look at this. It's contact access, it's based on the speaker. They can do a bunch of things here. If you look at the child permissions, they have access to update the contact. But the other thing here is notes. If this is, this should be added automatically, but it doesn't always get auto, added automatically. So let's just take a quick look at here at the notes configuration. Basically, we want to allow our users to be able to add notes, read, delete, append, update. Um, I've basically added all the permissions here. Um, this is something I needed to set up even for the Azure blob storage to work. I'm not exactly sure why, because notes and um, the, the storage is a little bit different, but anyways, it's something that needs to be done. So I've set that up for that particular table permission. It is linked to the authenticated users web role. Um, basically, yeah, table permissions is key for this. So we've got all that configured. And then the other thing we need to do is go over to the Power Pages management app which of course in the Power Pages management app, this is where we have our configuration settings. Let me just expand this just a little bit for you. Let's go into site settings. So you will need this enhanced file upload um, site setting. If it's an older website, if it's a newer one, this apparently is enabled by default. Um, again, just something to check on if Azure building out, configuring this. All right, let's test this out. I'm gonna go into preview desktop. All right, I'm signed into my user. I'm going to find here Scott Connersman. I want to go. All right, so I'm into my web page now. I'm going to, I've logged in as Scott. I'm going to go into the record itself. Basically, regular form, but if we scroll down, we see we have a uh, upload maximum file up to nine gigabytes. That's huge. Let's click on upload. I basically, I've grabbed a huge file. 3.5 gigabytes, and we see here a little progress bar. So this is probably gonna take a little while to run. All right, we see here that the file has been uploaded. I can actually go and delete it if I have the proper permissions. Um, this did take a long time. This was a three and a half gigabyte file. It did take quite a while to upload. Um, hopefully this can be optimized a little bit. Of course, that could depend on your connection. Um, I think I have pretty good upload speeds here, so I'm not sure why that took so long. Um, so just be aware of that and we can continue to upload more files, but it's kind of cool that we can now upload very large files through the Power Pages website. Now, um, that's just using the regular out of the box forms, but if you're a developer, you can actually, they have been enhancements to the Power Pages portal web API as well for the file attachments. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but let's just take a quick look at the docs. All right, so here we have a, a new uh, document about using the web API to upload files to the Azure blob storage as well for Power Pages. So this goes through, I have not gone through these steps myself. Um, hopefully someone, if you wanna go try it, go for it. Um, it does give you um, some of the steps to go through, um, very well laid out the document, along with some sample code. So you can take a look at this and try this out for yourself. Um, if you are in a position where you need to develop custom web templates, custom web pages within Power Pages to do this file upload. So take a look at that and hopefully uh, this will kind of achieve what you need it to do for your own personal projects. Um, anyways, hope you enjoy this video and I look forward to the next one.